Hello, Neil Gardner here and Bob the Hat, of course. Very important to say hello from Bob the Hat and welcome back to the Listening Nook. Uh, here we have our lovely headphones over here. Hef the headphones. And uh, over here, you can't see them, uh, but the record stacks. Now, something interesting has happened in the last fortnight. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, it was my mum and dad's 50th wedding anniversary. Well done, guys. 50 years, that's amazing. And um, we all met up at their place up in Bedford. And uh, when I arrived, Dad said, oh, I found some stuff. I was going through the garage and everything else. And I think I found some old records of yours. Uh, and he had, oh my Lord, he had. He'd found quite a few hundred records of mine, uh, singles, 12 inches uh, and albums. And, and in fact, they weren't just mine. There were some of mine, some of his, some of my grandfather's, uh, and also some of uh, my old school friend, Richard Withies, who had given to me years back. And also rather movingly, uh, some from my old best friend, Peter Barnes, uh, who sadly passed away back in 2003. And I had taken some of his records uh, as keepsakes. And dad had stored them all away. And basically he wanted some room back in the garage uh, for his stuff. And he said, do I want to take them home? Did I want to take them home? Is the listening nook just a place for vinyl love? Oh yes. So, I've got a, quite a lot more vinyl, lots of classic vinyl. Needs a bit of cleaning, some of it, uh, and there's quite a few doubles there. So I'm gonna be popping down uh, into Beckenham soon to uh, maybe get rid of some of the old vinyl that I don't need. Uh, but before then, I thought I'd introduce you to some of the joys some of the absolute gifts that I found inside these boxes. So I thought I'd start with seven inches. So if I'll just lean down here, it'd be pretty quick with these because there's quite a lot. Um, there's about 200 seven inches in the boxes and uh, I've managed to go through most of them. And I thought I'd show you a few of the gems uh, and these are all originals as well. So here we are, we'll start off with the Pet Shop Boys. You gotta love the Pet Shop Boys and they're back at the moment and they're going through a lot of their back catalog on new release. Uh, but this original seven inch of Always On My Mind. Here we are, let me bring it into the camera a bit for you. A little bit of shadowing going on there. And uh, very nice, the A side has Always On My Mind. B side has uh, Do I Have To? Uh, I'll show you the, the rear, there we go. And uh, there you are, gorgeous. Can't wait to listen to that again, put that over there. Next up, it's a classic. And I actually got two copies of this. The first one's slightly damaged. So I think this might be Pete's old copy. Oh yes, the original boy. Did we love this song? Uh, the original with a lovely photo of the boys on the back. It's uh, Ghostbusters, Ray Parker Jr. And um, wow, it really takes me back. I remember, I think it might've been our first family holiday abroad somewhere in the Mediterranean, Mallorca or, or, or Mallorca, I think Mallorca, and we used to pester the poor DJ in the evenings to play this for us. Um, wow, what a song. Great stuff. Still isn't a tire. Uh, still not tired of that track. Brilliant track. Um, this is one a few you might not know of. This is Lovebug Starsky, uh, and just one of his amazing tracks at the time, House Rocker. I love Lovebug Starsky. I've actually found a 12-inch copy of Amityville as well, The House on the Hill. Um, I'm going to see if I might pull the Lovebug Starsky ones aside and do a separate listening nook for those. Uh, but there we are. It's got, uh, it's got House Rocker on one side and then a dub mix on the uh, reverse. Uh, so something there for the uh, for the uh, Warriors of the Disco uh, Distotech guys there would particularly like that one. So I think I'll do a, probably do a special uh, on Lovebug Starsky. Um, rather shamefully, I don't know if you can see, I'll bring it up to the camera, but look, there's little holes. Um, at one point when I was doing hospital radio, I did um, put these into like a folder and I put holes in them. It's sacrosanct, but the vinyl's okay, I promise you. So racing on, Bronski Beat, come on, come on. It's a classic, look at the colors artwork beautiful uh, come on come on on the a side and actually come on come on uh uh on the uh yeah on the a side and something special on the b side so there we are lovely bronsky beat guys love that proper 80s dance music come on going on and uh yeah wow this is a very unusual one ready it's do they know it's christmas it's band-aid and look at that cover art beautiful Beautiful montage car, uh, cover art, uh, very different from the one most people see. And on the back, we've got the actual gang themselves, and you can see who everyone is, and where they uh, where they are in the lineup. So um, yeah, I'm really proud of that. It's got Feed the World on the B side, 
Uh, so really nice copy, that one. Very proud to have that. Now, this is one you're going to laugh at me. I don't care. It was one of my favourite shows of the 80s, Moonlighting. Do you remember Moonlighting with Bruce Willis and Sh uh, Sybil Shepherd and loads of other people? Where it had such a great theme track and they actually released it. It was by Al Jarreau, Moonlighting. And there it is. That was my first time I ever heard Al Jarreau and fell in love with his voice at the time. And this is really nice because this is a double, uh, a double A side pack. So two... Uh, bits of vinyl in here. You've got Moonlighting on side A of, tr of the first disc and Golden Girl on the other and then Morning and Let's Pretend on the second disc. Really really nice. I think it's gatefold as well. Let me remember if it is. Oh no it's not. No. But uh, really really love that. Played that to death. I'm not even sure if that'll even play now but really good song. What a great voice. What a man. Moving on. Uh, a bit later in the 80s I kind of fell in love with these guys. Ooh, lovely, lovely Def Leppard. Now we're going to be having a Def Leppard listening nook soon, which is going to have a prize as well, a giveaway. Um, but this is a uh, Heaven Is, and that's taken from the Adrenalize album. But this is a special edition, as you can see. So they've got an autographed etched disc, and I'm going to take it out. There's the back for you. There's the guys. Sorry for the reflections. But if I'm very careful, so you see uh, A and B are on the A side. And then on the B side, I'm going to try and see if you can see this. Yeah, just about in the light. There we go. All the band signatures etched into the B side of the disc. How cool is that? So um, lovely. Really pleased to have found that one. Ah, put that one away. Still going. There's lots. There's so many I could go through, but I'll try to pare it down to just a few specials and ones that I just, you know, just mean something to me. Do you remember this lady? Betty Boo, just doing the do. And this is um, Where Are You Baby? What a great song. Remember Where Are You Baby? Where are you baby? Do -do -do. Uh, Betty Boo, um, I think she's just come back recently with some new music. Really nice stuff. Uh, a bit of 50s sci-fi artwork on the back. Can't wait to listen to that again. Must see if I've got the album, actually. And then, remember Stock Aitken and Waterman? I think we all do. And remember all that Jason Donovan and Kylie Minogue stuff. But they actually had this interesting track called Roadblock. I love this track. It was so different from what I knew them for. Um, it's a really interesting piece of dance music with samples. Um, really, really interesting stuff. If you haven't heard it, look it up on YouTube. Uh, Roadblock, it's called. Uh, and the B-side has what they call the rare dub mix, so presumably a club mix. Um, really good fun. Love to, the fact I found that again. Now this I'm very proud of. Very proud to have the very first, very first single release in the UK from Rage Against the Machine. Uh, Killing in the Name, probably one of the most important albums in my life, their debut album, uh, and I think I might have been the first person in UK radio to play a track by theirs in the in the UK, not quite sure, I certainly remember uh, being one of the first in commercial radio to do it, someone at the B probably beat me to it, but Killing in the Name, just simple, effective, superb, what a band, so wish they were uh, back together. But there it is, the first single. Gotta love that one. And then, now, if you've been watching and listening for a while, or reading some of the blogs, you'll know my love of Cold Cut, and they've been back recently with some really interesting reggae stuff. Uh, but here they are, once again, with my telephone. Do you remember this? Probably not. It's quite rare, this one. Um, B-side has theme from Evil Eddie, but this is, uh, uh, this is uh, my telephone. I'm going to definitely do a little bit of a review on this one, because uh, I just want to listen to it again. But I love the artwork. Look at the old kind of BBC Micro B Spectrum Commodore type graphics. Isn't that amazing stuff? Love that. Brilliant. Cold cut. More, 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 more. And then, racing on. I actually don't think this is mine. I think this might have been Peter's. Queen, the original Flash 7-inch. Look at that. Uh, EMI number 5126. I mean, blimey. Uh, and then the B-side has something called Football Fight. So I'm going to have to uh, put it on the uh, deck and, and have a listen to that. I don't even know what year this 7-inch is from. Let's have a look. It's uh, not in too bad condition. A little dusty. It needs a proper clean. Let's have a look. This is um, 1980. So there we are. Look at that. 1980 Queen original flash from the motion picture flash gordon of course um i'm gonna slide that back in there be very careful how we do that needs a bit of a dusting what a joy what an album what a film um and then last few these gets uh get fun i don't know if you remember these guys uh, these girls but mel and kim respectable brilliant stuff look at that how gorgeous they were i know it's the 80s but it doesn't matter it's gorgeous they're brilliant it was a great song really good stuff very poppy a uh, stock aching and waterman of course and then we get into um 
yeah, some fun. So this is clearly Pete's, I promise you, because I didn't ever buy this, but I'm so glad I now own it. It's the original A-Team theme music uh, by Mr. Mike Post. And look, there are the guys. And uh, in a very unoriginal twist, there are the guys. Um, so there it is. Um, yeah, seven-inch version of the A-Team theme. Why not? And then one for, uh, well, perfectly for me, actually. As you probably know, I produce a lot of Doctor Who for the BBC. So look, here we are. It's Mr. Davison himself, Doctor Who. Uh, it's the Doctor Who Ron Grainer, uh, Ron Grainer theme, um, arranged by Peter Howell. On the B side is a thing called the Astronauts. The Astronauts? I don't know that. I'm going to have to play it. Um, but yes, this came out to commemorate Peter Davison becoming the fifth Doctor. So, hey... Uh, worked with Peter, lovely guy. Uh, worked with uh, his daughter Georgia as well, who's lovely. And uh, of course his son-in-law, David. They're all lovely. That's just a lovely bunch. So, uh, hootastic, that one. I've also found, but I can't find it for this uh, video, um, uh, a seven-inch of the Wurzels song, uh, <laughs> brilliantly by John Pertwee. So I'll have to find that again. And then finally, I had to show this as a seven-inch spitting image. Oh yes, it's the uh, the chicken song. You may be too young to hear uh, to know of this one. Gorgeous, uh, silly artwork on the back. And this is from the Spitting Image guys and uh, sung mostly, or well, in part, by an actual friend of mine, a guy I've been known for quite a few years. I work with a lot on audiobooks, Michael Fenton Stevens. So when I see him next in a couple of weeks' time, I'm getting this baby signed. Um, I love this. Uh, it's got a very, very non-PC B-side, which I'm not going to tell you the title of right now, but look at that artwork. Come on, we need Spitting Image back. We really do. So there are the seven inches. I'd say there's about 200 of them in the box and it's been an absolute joy going through them, although extremely dirty. I don't know where they've been for the last 20, 30 years. Now, as for 12 inches, there's probably about 50 of them and most of them seem to be dance related. I think a lot of them I got um, when I was a head of music for a local radio station. So quite a few of them are just club mixes and things, but a few stuck out. Uh, look at this, the original 12 inch mix of Snap, The Power. I've got the power! And that's about enough of that, otherwise I'll get copyright striked. Um, so look at the artwork, isn't it beautiful? Having done a lot of work recently with the Mighty Pat Mills in the world of comic books, I'm loving that. That's all very 2000 AD. Very nice, very, a bit eagerly as well. Uh, a bit more comic book at the start, on the back, and uh, yep, there he is. Do you remember him? Turbo B? Look at that, it's Snap. Um, brilliant, loving it. It's a full remix. There's the Transformer mix and the Generator mix. So, really looking forward to having a listen to that one. And then also, might not get all of you thrilled, but I'm quite happy to have it. It's an extended remixed version of Phil Bailey and Phil Collins' absolute classic Easy Lover, uh, to which many of us in the 80s had a bit of a thing for. Um, and look at that, £1.75. Cheap. Wouldn't get that now. And on the back, for those of you who haven't seen either Phil or Phil, there's the two Phils. And uh, fabulous stuff. Woman was the B-side on that. Uh, really, really, really good song. I absolutely love that song, so I'm very pleased to find that on original. And then, okay, for those of you who really did grow up in the 70s and 80s, you'll remember Top of the Pops on the BBC Thursdays, and this is the infamous The Wizard theme music from Top of the Pops, as written by Paul Hardcastle. This is the extended theme, with even more mad wizard ramblings going on in the middle of it, and uh, a fantastic 80s image. Look at that. How are those... How are they staying up? It's magic. Not even plugged in. Don't know how that works. So, um, wow. And that's got the Wizard Part 2 extended version on the B-side. So it's actually Part 1 and Part 2. That's amazing. And then finally, from the 12 inches, this I don't even remember having. It might have come from Pete or Richard. Um, it may even just come from me. I don't honestly remember, but what a joy to have. Musical youth, past the duchy. To the left hand side yeah past the duchy it's a bit unoriginal in its uh front sleeve uh special 12 inch club version but then on the back look it's all the guys how amazing i wonder what they look like now but yeah past the duchy with a b side or as they used to call it c slash w never quite sure what that means we'll find out maybe you can tell me in the uh, comments um give love a chance I have to give that a spin find out what's going on So that's the 12 inch singles. Really exciting stuff, I think you'll agree. So we've had the seven inches, they're now over there. We've had the 12 inches, they're now down here. And then we're gonna get into some, some albums. So I'm gonna go through these pretty quick. Now, 
you may know from some of my reviews, that's a bit of a thing. I had a bit of a thing for uh, for dance music and house music and early hip hop in the 80s and, and early 90s. And this is an album I played absolutely upside down, inside out. Um, it's a, a compilation album called Scratch Tracks and has some really interesting stuff on there. Probably people you've not heard of. Maybe the Rocksteady crew you'll know. Uh, maybe Dimples D. Um, but really interesting. There's a whole series of these. This is the only one I ever had. Uh, but it had Dimples D, Valerie, Oliver, Shannon, Fun Fun, uh, and all of them had copious amounts of scratching going on. Uh, really, I mean, just over the top amounts of scratching. What I also love is, look, it's got the original home taping is killing music thing on the back. So um, I don't think I did actually ever tape it. I think I just played it off of there. So I was really, really pleased to find that again. I'm definitely going to be giving that a bit of a play. So we'll continue on in the same theme, dance, club, music. And this is another compilation, Wrapping Up the House. Look at that, Wrapping Up the House, nice and shiny on the front. Unfortunately, someone scribbled all over it with a pen at some point, so we've got pen marks. And it's a gatefold. Look at the colorations, pure 80s. You've got to love that, lots of orange and purple. And uh, yeah, so this is where house music and rap music came together. And so we have things like Superfly Guy by S Express and We Don't Exist by the Acid Boys. Uh, who else is there? We've got uh, I'll House You, The Jungle Brothers, Cold Cut, of course, Stop This Crazy Thing, Stomp Master Plan, um, even Samantha Fox with Love House. How very strange. Um, but I do remember loving this. I mean, really good. Rob Bass and DJ Easy Raw, Kid and Play. Remember Kid and Play? Even James Brown with the playback, mi uh, the payback mix. Um, so really interesting compilation, that. Let's see what year that was. Is it, so it's from KTEL, the kings of uh, compilation albums at the time. No, there's no, no year on there. Um, but I love that. I really played that a lot. So continuing on, uh, staying with compilations. Can't believe I found it, but here it is. The very first, now that's what I call music. Oh yes, the very first. It's almost pristine. A little bit of uh, marking there. Ever so slight damage to the top, unfortunately. But I've got to say, for something this old, it's in pretty darn good condition. Uh, and there's everything that's that, that's uh, on there. Great hits of the time. Let's have a look. So we've got uh, Phil Collins, You Can't Hurry Love. Duran Duran, Is There Something I Should Know? Kajagoogoo, come on, Kajagoogoo. Uh, Big Apple, Tina Turner, Let's Stay Together. The Cure, The Love Cats. And I love this, this poster on the back of the pig and the chicken. Love it. Brilliant. Original. First original pressing of Now That's What I Call Music 1. That's got to be special. And then moving on, something that really did get played far too much and has been damaged quite badly, but I'm so glad to have it, I might put it in a, in a frame, is the original Jeff Love and his orchestra Star Wars and other space themes with a frankly dodgy uh, representation of many, many sci-fi classics on the front there. I'm not sure what they've done to the uh, USS Enterprise, but whatever it is, it looks painful. Uh, and a very weird kind of Dirk Benedict looking Luke Skywalker and a, a much sexier Barbarella-esque uh, Princess Leia and then a Barbarella. So what's going on there? Uh, there's even a TARDIS and a Space 1999 and it's, it's all very good stuff. And on there, he uh, Jeff and his orchestra play stuff like obviously the Star Wars theme, the UFO theme, the Star Trek theme, Barbarella's theme. It's all themes. It's like a theme. It's themes. Uh, but that, unfortunately, quite damaged um, and a little bit bent. Um, but you know what? Again, might be worth putting on the wall. It's rather special, that one. Uh, that came out. Let's have a look. Does it tell us when that came out? Is there a year on that? Uh, looks like it's 1978, maybe. So very, very cool. I know a lot of people of my age remember this well. Now, moving on to something that definitely belonged to my best friend, Peter. And I'm very glad I've now found because uh, I'm always searching for memories for us together. Uh, it's been like 14 years since he passed away and uh, you know, time moves on, but you do look for little things that you remember. And I remember him having this in his bedroom and uh, I'm so glad I've now found it. It's the story of Star Wars. Yeah, the story of Star Wars, even in its original protective cellophane wrapper. And on the back it doesn't really tell you what's going on it's just a, a still from the film so if we pull it out of its protective wrapper and let's have a look it gate folds out sorry about this you can't see what i'm doing can you it gate folds out uh, into this slightly now damaged because the glue has, has, has disintegrated but this this booklet as you can see uh, which then gives you a few pictures from the film etc uh, etc and 
yeah it, it's fascinating it's I'm not really sure what it is. I've never listened to it. I daren't. Um, I'm going to pull out the... I'm going to be naughty. I'm going to pull the vinyl out and see if it tells us what's actually on here. Okay, here we go. Very dusty. I need to give it a good clean. Uh, okay. Okay, it says it's an original cast with narration by Roscoe Lee Brown. So it could actually be the film, clips from the film, uh, with a narrator over the top. So it sounds like it. Uh, yeah, and with some with some of John Williams's music. So I'm really going to have to have a listen to this and then come back to you with a full review. Because um, it was something that was obviously very precious to Pete. Star Wars being his absolute favourite thing. Uh, and, uh, and it, yeah, I think that's something I absolutely need to listen to. It's from 1977, this. And hardly touched at all. So that is going to be something absolutely special to listen to. Very, very excited about that one. Now I'm going to race on because this is turning into the world's longest short video and it's meant to be short on the listening nook. Uh, so I'm going to race through the last few. Um, look at this. Look at this. Now that's how you do an album. Six Six Sputniks Flaunt It, their original first album. Look at that anime inspired. I didn't know what any of this was about. It just looked so cool. I didn't know about Japanese culture at the time. And then on the back, uh, you can see a load of pictures. It had these adverts, these weird adverts in between the tracks. I didn't know if they were made up or real products at the time. Uh, uh, things like um, Thorn EMI advertising on there and, and hair product. But then you see the band. I mean, hair product was their thing. This is such a strong album. So many great, great albums. Uh, so many great tracks on this album. Um, so look at that. Uh, one more look at that. That's just gorgeous. Okay, and racing on. Now, this is interesting. It's the first band I ever interviewed for BBC Radio Bedfordshire, of all places. Uh, and this was Airhead and their debut album, Boing. You probably have never heard of them. I think it might have been their only album. Uh, but it has a really good, fun pop tracks on it. This is around the early 90s. Um, so we're kind of getting in. Uh, we're kind of getting out of uh, 80s uh, pop music and dance music through grunge and starting to get into what I suppose would later become Britpop. Um, so anyway, Airhead, very cool. I like the I like the cover an awful lot. They're nice guys to interview. They're very patient with a very young me doing an interview. Now this is very exciting. This is one of my favourite albums of uh, the eighties, and they're back. They're putting together a new single and possibly a new album soon. So if you go to Pledge Music, you can help the girls of Fuzzbox. Oh yes. Yeah, I was in love with them. We were all in love with them. They were gorgeous, but they were great singers. Really fun album. This is uh, Big Bang. Fuzzbox, also officially known as We've Got a Fuzzbox and We're Going to Use It. Quite a punky band originally, but then this album came out and it's full on pop, but, but pop with, with really great uh, Prince like guitar work, um, interesting lyrical themes. Uh, it wasn't just pretty girls singing at you. There was a lot to this album, well worth multiple listens. Uh, and as you see, it's, it's pretty much what you'd expect from an album. Uh, but I can highly recommend this and go on to Pledge Music and see if you can help them with the new single and, and all their exciting new projects because they're well worth it. Okay, we're nearly there. We move on to an album which I think is woefully unregarded and forgotten about. But it's Red Box, The Circle and the Square. Uh, probably one of the first pop albums uh, that I heard that, that possibly, well, I suppose, away from Tears for Fears and Talk Talk uh, that kind of had a theme an underlying story, uh, a bit of worldliness to it, and uh, some very odd sounds, some very strange musical uh, goings on in there. And this is a rare gatefold edition of it as well, as you can see. Beautiful stuff. Helpfully gives you the lyrics, which I used to have to guess at the time as a kid, and I'm sure I got most of them very, very wrong. Um, some very strong songs on here. For America is very well known, um, as is Chenko and Lean On Me. Uh, and they all have these very strange accompaniments to them. Um, but a really, really strong album. I'm very happy to have this. I've got it on CD and digital download, but really happy to now have it again on vinyl. And then we get to... I remember going to the shops to buy this. Uh, and I went with one of my friends from school to a local uh, record shop in Bedford where uh, they had a lot of um, dance, urban rap and hip hop music, kind of what they specialise, like a bit of a club record shop. And uh, he didn't think I'd be able to get away with buying this because he thought you had to be 18. I think I was 16 or 17 at the time. Uh, but I went in, had my money, bought it, went home, listened to it, was blown away. It's NWA's Straight Outta Compton. And now, as you can see, it's old. It's been battered and bruised. It's got uh, old cellar tape along the spines because it's been played and used so much. But what an album. I mean, Straight Outta Compton, uh, Gangster Gangster, Express Yourself. You don't get albums like this that often in the world. And I'm really proud that I was there at the start with this and got this. Um, wow, just amazing. And it's still here. It's in my collection. Really happy to have that. 
nearly at the end, our last three now uh, from NWA from one end of the spectrum to another. But what a great album. Paula Abdul's Forever Your Girl. Wasn't she pretty? What a great singer, songer, uh, singer, uh, songwriter and dancer, of course. A lot of you know her from later years from uh, American X Factor pop idol stuff. Uh, but this is her, her debut and it's a really strong album. Uh, things like The Way You Love Me, Knocked Out, Opposites Attract, uh, really good, straight up. Uh, this really hit at the right time for me in my teenage years, so of course, you know, fell in love with her a bit. Uh, but the songs are great. Pop, but with a little bit of attitude, really good videos. Uh, again, another good, strong album just to listen all the way through to. Talk about strong, great albums. You can't get much stronger than this. Nick Kershaw's Human Racing. And this original, through to the point it's still got the sticker on it telling you all about it. And uh, Dancing Girls, Wouldn't It Be Good, um, Shame On You, Human Racing, I Won't Let The Sun Go Down On You. These are just a really important key 80s tracks for a lot of us who grew up in that period. And uh, what an album. What a man. What a singer-songwriter. A really strong performer as well. Um, Nick Kershaw, alongside Howard Jones, I think, are probably two of the strongest singer-songwriters of that period for me. Um, and I've had the joy of meeting them both and interviewing them and working with them. And they're still, well, particularly Nick. I mean, what a guitarist as well. Wrote a lot of songs for other people. So beautiful album. And then we're going to end on probably the most important album to me uh, of my youth. And you're going to laugh, but I don't care. This is it. Cost £1.80, this. Starships, knee deep in the hoopla. Okay, so this is Jefferson Starship, who in the uh, 60s, 70s had a lot of really important, culturally important songs, and then morphed finally in the 80s into this, what people, many people would think of as just a silly pop rock band. I love them. I knew them as Starship first, and this is their period that I love the best. Knee Deep in the Hoopla is the album. Why? Because it's got We Built This City on it. It's my all-time favourite song. I don't care what anyone says, it's the greatest pop song ever written. Um, and the whole album is just pure pop rock classics from start to finish. You can't go wrong listening to this over and over again. And, um, you know, it's Grace Slick for, 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 the, for the sake of great singing. Grace Slick for, uh, just blows your mind. Um, so, yeah, look at this. It's, it's um, yeah, I'm so happy. I mean, I have to admit, um, he does look a little bit like a chuckle brother, but that's not his fault. Um, just, what can I say? I'm so happy that I've now got this album back and um, probably will never play this version of it because I've got it on download, I've got it on CD, and I think I've got a much more battered version of this hidden away somewhere. Um, but yeah, wow, this is just so important to me, this album. So yeah, that's it. That's really all I'm going to do this time. <laughs> really all. It's probably like a 20-minute video. Um, but I just wanted, A, to say thanks to my to my dad for keeping hold of all of them and, and letting me know that he had them, and obviously to Pete and to Richard for letting me have their collections, uh, and particularly with Pete's stuff, as a way to reconnect with him. It's been a long time since I last saw him, uh, and wherever he is out there, I'm sure he's happy to know that his record collection is now built into my record collection, uh, and we're it's all merged back together in the flat we we uh, we used to share anyway. So he'd love all this. He'd love YouTube, and he'd love sharing his passion for music and albums and all the things we did together. So that's a really, really nice thing for me. And otherwise, it means we've got a heck of a lot more stuff to start reviewing here in the Listening Nook. So I primed Bob. Uh, he's getting ready. He's getting ramped up to do a whole load of new reviews. We got a load more stuff to do from our friends at Flying Vinyl, from Wax and Stamp. Uh, we got some new albums we bought. Uh, I've got uh, all this stuff that you've just seen and a whole load more I want to do. But if you've got uh, some vinyl you'd like me to review, uh, please do get in touch, send it our way, and I'll be very happy to do a review for you both here on the video and also on the main blog. Uh, and anything else you'd like to send our way, just let us know. In the meantime, I've been Neil Gardner, he's been Bob the Hat, he's Hef the Headphones, and this has been The Listening Nook, and you've been from it, and we'll see you very soon. Bye!